For this kitchen concrete countertop, we wanted to create a uniquely shaped drain board for the sink area, so we used SketchUp to draw the three-dimensional plane. We used a ZenBot CNC machine to cut the profile out of tooling board, providing us with the model. The model was sanded with 220 grit sandpaper to remove tooling marks. We mounted the model in a melamine box to cast a silicon rubber mold, which we will use to cast our resin plug. That will be used when we cast our concrete countertop. We applied a coat of Sonite wax to all surfaces to seal them. We then measured our Moldstar 30 silicon rubber components. We mixed them thoroughly until a uniform color is noticed and poured into our mold box. We recommend elevating the pour from high above the mold box to pour a long, thin stream. This will help to eliminate air bubbles by tearing them open. We have a 45 minute working time. After full cure of six hours at room temperature, we demold. The silicon is easily removed from the original. For making the resin plug, we will use task 16. Measure the components one part A to two parts B by weight. We have a pot life of six minutes, so we mix quickly and deliberately for a few minutes to combine both components before we pour. We chose task 16 because it is fast setting and will be durable while having concrete cast against it multiple times. Allow to cure for at least 90 minutes before demolding. Since urethane doesn't stick to silicone, the resin is demolded smoothly without having used any release agent. I've already built the forms for our sink display counters, the low and, and the tall. I use pocket screws for the tall walls. Now I'm going to be showing you how I caulk the seams and I'll add the foam knockout where the sink will be and the insert for our drain board as we previously made. I apply sunite wax to the areas to be caulked. I followed this by wiping the residue to remove excess and leave a thin film. I applied an ample bead of silicon caulk to the corners where an eased edge is needed. Using a steel ball tool, strike the pattern into the caulk bead to create a proper clean fillet radius. Be careful not to overwork the caulk as it sets up. Attach any foam knockouts or plugs with double-faced carpet tape to secure in place. I applied Sonite wax to the resin drain board plug and followed the caulking and tooling process where eased edges were needed. After the silicon caulk has set, usually overnight, the excess tails are removed. This will reveal a uniform clean radius detail for casting. We sprayed an application of Aquacon release agent over the entire form surface. We gathered our materials for the entire pour. For this project, we are using our GFRC blended mix, which we will be using conventionally. We start by adding chilled water to our mixer and adding our pigment, which will be universe. We dose some water reducer and mix thoroughly. We begin adding four of our five concrete bags to blend until homogeneous. The mix at this time should be fluid because we still have another bag of dry material to add to the batch. Adjust the mix with water reducer and continue adding the remaining dry ingredients. We begin spraying the form starting in the corners and working outwards away from the origin. Working across the form, we stop a few inches shy of the adjacent corner. We use air to blow the excess sand which has accumulated in this corner. We follow the process of spraying the corner and working outwards to join the previous paused area. We continue until all surfaces are covered. We gently brush the face coat to eliminate any air that may be trapped in the face. We added the AR glass fibers to the remaining mix to be used as the structural backer layer. The backer layer is applied carefully to not disturb the face coat. We continued this process until we achieved our prescribed thickness on the verticals. We added a layer of scrim to the area over the resin drain board insert because this area will not be as thick and needs additional structural support to resist cracking. We covered the concrete with curing fabric and packing blankets once firm enough and let them cure overnight. Insulating will allow temperature to spike, thus allowing for quicker demolding times. The next day we uncovered the curing blankets and ground the bottom edge flat using a diamond grinding wheel. We removed the form walls from the drop edge countertop, flipped it onto its back edge and rolled it into its upright position. Then we removed the foam and resin plug. We did the same with the full thickness counter. 
We processed with 200 grit diamond polishing pads to remove the casting cream surface. This will allow for better penetration of any glazes or sealing system that may be used. In order to fill any voids that we may have in the concrete, we mix the bone paste with the same pigment loading as the casting for color match. Using my hand, I worked the material into the surface in circular motions. I followed by scraping the residue flush with a drywall knife to eliminate excess that will have to be polished off. Because there is a polymer and a pigment in this mix, the porous concrete may be colored differently. Therefore, we apply the bone paste to the entire surface. Once dry, usually overnight, I polished the slurry residue off with a 200 grit polishing pad. I cleaned the top and allowed to dry. I started applying Buddy Rhodes glazes in different color tones and shades to give a mottled organic appearance of natural stone. This is accomplished through layering many applications of different colors. A microfiber cloth was used with a ragging technique to faux color the countertop. A final application of the glaze was applied using a high density foam roller. The Buddy Rhodes glazes have some sealing qualities in them, as they contain some reactive sealer. This helps to lock the color on the surface as well as in the pores. We still recommend applying a true concrete sealer before putting the piece into service. We used ICT PS1 LS for these countertops because it works well in conjunction with the glazes. After the sealer has dried, the countertop can be put into use. However, during this time, the system will continue to build stain resistance. For the following month or two, we recommend wiping up all wet spills. We hope you have enjoyed this video and we will see you next time.